Hello everyone, it's Leon here, and I am with Meeks. Meeks, we're we going Meeks now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's we've uh, we've both been playing um, the Last of Us preview code, which is uh, two or three hours of is it Pittsburgh and Lincoln? Yes. Uh, and it goes with some code I played in PAX, which was uh, a sort of scary underground bit, which we'll see in a minute. Um, but we've seen this is the ambush setup, so this is the, yeah, the, this the is FMV, Pittsburgh. Yeah, um, which will lead into what we played in a moment, um, which is. The first sort of hands-on we really had with the, the the combat against humans as opposed to, to clickers, um, which I thought was I thought it was excellent in that you you never feel safe, you never feel like you're on top of anything, but you never feel like you're struggling, you never feel like you're cheated, uh, you you are being cheated, I should say. Yeah, it's a really interesting balance that strikes like we're seeing here in this uh, this building between you know moments of real vulnerability and moments of empowerment so it's it's kind of all about controlled bursts of aggression yeah so it's like you know maybe going in loud for a few seconds and then retreating breaking line of sight because the stealth system is all built around you know basically as soon as you get out of view they'll go to your last known position rather than telepathically yeah. honing in whenever you might be which is crucial to a good stealth system something that tomb raider kind of messed up this yeah year. i mean I, I found this this whole section when i played it just whizzed past in seconds because as you say you, you, you rush out you attack someone and you grab a brick smash their face in then you run off and you try and get round behind them and, and the whole thing just went past in a blur and I almost couldn't remember it, half I mean, of what I'd it's, done it's wonderfully kind of free form and improv Organizational once yeah. you kind of learn how to master your techniques because at, at the start if you're used to playing on chart you might just be tempted to go bang bang but it doesn't work like that because the guns do have much more of a, a kick about them and it's a yeah. deliberate kick to make sure you just can't spam in with and there's, you know, a, there's a slight kind of wobble isn't there to the yeah, end yeah yeah it's not a slight like a wobble teaming like, you know as people firing guns would have yeah and uh, this is another thing that surprised me when I played it there's quite a lot of sort of just kind of ambient yeah exploration contextual yeah. storytelling we just wander around and there's nothing except a little slide guitar yeah. wobbling away and it's, I mean this is Bill's town we're seeing now which is a, it's a really kind of almost reminds me somewhat of kind of Crosswind Silent Hill and the Raven Home section and yeah Halfway, but it's just it's something they mastered over the certainly the last two Uncharted where they were very good at. Everyone remembers Uncharted for the big Megaton set pieces, but it was something Uncharted that was very good at, and also the last was very good at. So there was real quiet ambient moments of yeah. conversation, incidental dialogue as you're wandering. And this, I mean, this this whole chunk is about sort of what, 10, 15 minutes sequence, yeah, yeah. And, and nothing yeah. really happens. You just wander in. Um, we'll see a little later on. There's like a record shop. You like as they're interacting with this sign, you see things. They talk about it. You could just discover stuff like there was a deflated basketball next to a, a hoop mm. an overgrown hoop you know and you just sort of really you're making the story yeah, up as you wander around it really around. gives you a, a time to appreciate yeah. just how beautiful this world is that they've yeah. created it's, it's just it's, it looks fabulous and we can see I mean this, this forest looks sort of incredible um, the, it's, the, it's, it's still a stork or a heron yeah the thing that flies off yeah. I mean it's still basically linear isn't it because I, I wandered around this yes. it's based, this area is a, is a circle mm -hmm. and I walked around thinking it was open and see what I could there find are, there. there are later sections though which are much more expansive um, just sort of ahead of this bit so mm. And you see, um, we'll see a, the section later on when you go underground, and that is basically like a big, large area that you can sort of interpret how you want. Um, but I mean, you know, see but yeah, the, the majority of the experience is yeah linear. Certainly, what we're seeing here. And it's uh, you know, so it, I mean, it looks beautiful. You can see little frogs skittering away, even when you go into the dark, as we're seeing here. Um, it, the detail's sort of incredible. Like, and you get these sort of, you see these computers, and you see stuff you recognise, and you sort of feel like you know the place. But because of the vulnerability and, and because of what's going on, it, it it makes you uneasy. Even though you go, oh, this is an office. This is uh, you know, this is a supermarket. Um, you just saw the crafting system there, which is again yeah. being deliberately designed to not be unwieldy, but you know, it's a very purpose design decision to make you constantly feel uncomfortable. So you really do have to you have to stop, kneel down, the yeah, ground, and it doesn't stop hit the, the game. Pad. It yeah. doesn't stop the game, and you like to switch. You have to like hold X to switch a weapon, which is again like it's very. It, a lot, you know, the game is informed, you know, by survival horror sensibilities yeah. as much as it is a cover shooter. So, and you really have to think about it because I've been in a situation where you know the enemy is sort of bearing down on me, um, like mm. these, you know, there's a clicker, say, and you know you have to in the game without freezing it, craft a shiv or a molotov, yeah. and they're looking for you and they're coming for you, and you're like desperately I mean, it's, willing. It's very this thing tactical as well because you know the reload times and the weapons are all you know pretty hefty. Yeah. so you really do have to be careful. And, time. and also there's the element of something I discovered there's an area where there's a couple of clickers um, and there's also a door and you can use shivs to 
unlock doors. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. have to decide, well, do I use the shiv to unlock this door and see if there's any good stuff in there, or do I use it to kill the, the clicker? Yeah, because the clicker is, unless you've got a shiv R, it will kill you with yeah. one hit. So, um, but you can also, so you can upgrade... Uh, Joel as well. We'll see a little bit. There's a uh, weapon customization we'll see in a moment. But you can. Is it? It's like flowers and pills and stuff. Isn't it? Yeah. You can sort of like upgrade abilities. Pills, pills and rations. You can yeah. upgrade the guns and. But, and actually, Joel, because one of the things and... you can do is you can unlock if you have a shiv, you will insta kill a clicker if he that attacks you. you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, you, yeah, you can upgrade his health. And so that, that's to that, so. some extent is going to. Um, it was again crafting something while some monsters bearing down. On you. But to some extent, the the upgrade system is going to change your. Playstyle, I guess, because if you've yeah. got that insta kill shiv ability, you're going to be a little more reckless. The maybe. guns, as well, we we're talking about how the buck earlier, you can actually reduce the recoil of guns as well to yeah. make it a slightly smoother experience if you do, you know, favour guns over, say, sneaking up behind people and strangling them. Okay, and yeah, this is what happens when you get caught, and it just, <laughs> just goes black, doesn't it? There's no, there's yeah, no well, kind of like. You see a bit of like ne- neck, neck entrails. Yeah. <laughs> can you have entrails in your neck? Uh, no. No, I bits. I know what you mean. Bits. In the neck, um, yeah. This is another thing I really like. This was sort of more of this kind of storytelling. This is from the the ambush we saw earlier, and they well, after you defeated them, you find this room where they've been kind of stripping and processing the bodies, and you know there's piles of shoes, mm. um, and you really sort of get a feel for sort of the, the the callousness and also the sort of the the thoroughness of this operation. This sort of the the new kind of order that that exists in the world. You're something in. you're kind of seeing there is like Ellie check to watch. Like your idol animations are lovely. You know. Well, as you play through, she kind of just messes around yeah. the environment. Really, she really feels like a believable teenager, like a living entity rather than just you know, a generic pile of polygons. Yeah, and you were talking about like traditional survival horror stuff. This is sort of a classic Silent Hill thing. You walk up to a door, what's it's rattling, the door? And what's going on? What's in the box? And then as you, you will see, now you open the door and there's nothing there. Yeah. And this bit I found beautifully timed because something does happen, but it, it's done in such a way that you've almost completely forgotten about it. I mean, it. it's, it's massively impressive considering Naughty Dog have no history with horror games. I suppose there are horror elements in the first and chart with, like, in the yeah. Descent people, but, like, the the sections we've seen here with the clickers are, like, we've both played that demo and it's, it's really terrifying. Pro- it's yeah, and the, really it's, scary. It's a master class in sound design. Yeah, because the sound is a really impressive thing that, that I don't think you really get until you play it. Oh, I played if you it, play it with headphones yeah. or surround sound, I, it's I, amazing. I genuinely kind of lost my shit playing it at packs because I screwed up that underground area surrounded by clickers all the noise I couldn't think to mm. form a plan um, and you were talking about the weapon customization in here so you can only do it at these benches when you find them sort of scattered around mm. it's a bit similar to Dead Island you know, in a weird yeah. way oh, they're much better than Dead um, <laughs> and we, as I say we only played about three or four hours so it's hard to see how much this will kind of affect it Overall, I, I my big worry when I was doing this is well, what if I put all my upgrade into a, one gun and then I never find any bullets for that gun for a, yeah, the entire yeah, level? Yeah, would potentially pose a risk. Yeah, uh, this this um, the people that played this I think found it a little contentious. Yeah, you get, I you had get, no problem with. Yeah, it, I had no problem. It's, it's, it's very. Um, we were talking about it before we recorded this video that yeah. it's quite similar to um, a session early on in Dead Space Two where you're suspended yeah. from I think a train. Um, but the, the oh yeah yeah but the, down. the problem is it with it is in amongst all those runners there's one clicker and if you mess it up um, yeah, he just kills you straight yeah, away so you have to find him and take him out first uh, but yeah I mean overall I think it's what I've played is like an incredible sort of piece of storytelling the action's really strong uh, I think it's going to be really impressive uh, you know when it comes out yep <laughs> yep <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep 